Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Astrologicals Racing. Today, we're gonna be reviewing a product from Next Level Racing. And they have this gaming pad, this haptic seat that you can essentially put on my office chair, you can put it on your car seat, you can put it on your racing simulator, a flight simulator. This thing is pretty versatile. In the ease of literally setting it up and switching components and just essentially strapping it into place and making it secure, you can do that in all under you know, 60 seconds to two minutes, which is actually pretty cool. So how this whole thing is gonna be structured, I'm just gonna give you relevant information about this product, specifications, and then based off of these specifications and then a little bit of personal feedback that I've had with other haptics and base shakers on my rig specifically, you can go ahead and make a decision on your own. Um, one thing to note here, when this came out a few years ago, this product was rather expensive. I think it was between $300 and $400. I just double checked on Amazon. And as of today, it is $178 on Amazon. So I thought, you know what? There are base shakers and pucks and amplifiers. There's all these crazy things that you could easily spend three to $400 on currently right now, that of which I have on my rig for a fraction of the cost. Eight centralized motors on my back, my bum, and my thighs to give me relevant information about the track. So I thought that was uh, worth the risk. And truthfully, after testing after a couple of days, these compared to base shakers, they're completely different. It would be like comparing the Sim Magic haptics, which are like this piston-like mo movement, to the rumblers that you get on pedals. Two completely different engines, right? One spins like this, it vibrates and spins at a higher frequency. And one physically moves like this piston-like movement. Same thing with the bass shaker, you have movement, you have a rumbling movement instead of a vibrating movement. These vibrate. These are amazing for, and this is just an attribute that I thought, I think they are great information to communicate with your body with higher frequencies. So if I'm running over left, if I'm turning left and I'm going over a left rumbler strip, which are those red and white, strips right there on the track and I can feel that all on the left side of my body and I think that's really awesome because it'll let me know now I'm on it now I'm off of it and then it stops so I think communicating things like that through haptics are very useful I think it's a good tool is it game change not necessarily but the biggest thing is you can't just install this and ex expect it to work right out of the box. You need to spend some time fine tuning it. And that's what we're about to do right here. I'm gonna spend some time with you guys here on SimHub because that's the software that I used to configure everything, set everything up. And this is all based off of, <clears throat> excuse me, one profile that I saw on a form and I thought this looks pretty good. And then I tweaked it myself. So let's go ahead and hop on the rig real quick. I'm gonna share with you my SimHub settings and then we'll do an analysis on everything and we'll cut out. All right, let's hop over into SimHub. So this is the main dashboard of SimHub. Make sure you are updated to the latest version, which is 9.6.6 .6 currently. So once you get this plugged in, there's two different ways to plug it in. One is the headphone jack and two is via USB. The way you want to plug this in is via USB. Plug that directly into the computer or a power supply USB hub and make sure once you go over to shake it, motors you'll go over to an effects profile you will create a new profile right here this one i haven't named yet which i can do real quick this one is going to be called uh, uh haptic if i can spell haptic seat okay press ok double click it and then you're going to go over to you're going to assign this motor you're going to output where this is going to be so you're going to have a list of uh, options here your force field pad if everything is connected correctly should populate right here click the down arrow it's going to ask you to enable it once you enable it you can then go into all of the effects that you can assign for this haptic pad so as you can see, I did spend some meticulous time doing so. So all of these you can test and you probably can't hear those because, and that's another plus. This haptic uh, seat 
is literally, uh, it's virtually silent. And all you're doing is feeling the actual tactile uh, vibrations in these specific areas. So you have front right, front left, rear right, rear left, uh, lower right, lower left, and then this is the upper right and then upper left. So let's go through these really quick, just so you guys have a pretty good understanding of my profile here. So first one is the acceleration G-force. Now lower back, lower right, like I wanna feel this all in my back. Uh, a little bit of G-force here, so I want that enabled. I want gear shifts and gear impacts. I want that across the board. I want this whole thing shaking. Um, road impacts. So these are important. See how I have these like a checkerboard. Front right, front right, front left, front left. You see how I have these assigned accordingly? You don't want all these just blended together. So if I have front right effects of road impacts, I want these on the front right of the seat, right? Same thing goes with these left and right channels of this section right here and then rear left and rear right. I want to assign these accordingly. So left will go with left and right will go with right. Right will go with right, left will go with left. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, rumble strip, this is the one that I love the most. So I have this one gain and I'll go through the actual effect gain on each of these as well. So the rumble strips are probably my favorite. So when I'm going over curbs and stuff, I can actually feel if I'm turning left, I'm going over a rumble strip. I can feel that all on the left side of my body. <laughs> it's actually really satiating because it's like, oh shit, like I can feel that now. Like <laughs> it's pretty cool. So rumble strips, again, assign those accordingly, right to right, left to left, right to right, left to left. Road vibration, again, this is also a pretty decent one. So I have this turned down, I think dialed down a little bit, but again, assign this accordingly. RPMs, so I have this assigned on the entire haptic as well. I want to simulate the road texture as well. <laughs> All of these are turned off. So speed, I never even used speed before. Speed with curving, useless. Static wind, useless. TC active, I have those on the pedals and that's another thing I wanna get into right here. So all of these are gonna be all lower body, everything below the legs, like all on my feet. So traction, traction loss, TC active, wheel lock, wheel slip, wheel spin and lock. I want all of this down below. Down below I have a 300EX Bass Shaker by Dayton Audio, and also the Sim Magic Haptic Pistons, which are on the back of each pedal as well. So I'm getting feedback, everything below uh, the legs right here from uh, the body down, uh, including ABS. So like these, this is how I personally set it up and it feels pretty dang good. Uh, now let's go over to the individual effects. Now, acceleration G-Force, I have that on about 42%. And the reason why, and it, it's not really gonna make sense to you guys why I have it this way. And you guys can fine tune around this, but just understand this will give you a good baseline of what makes it feel good for me. And what may feel good for me may not feel great for you. So use this as like a baseline. And if you wanna copy these, well, cool. I just, just helped you out big time. So 42% on this one. Uh, gear shift, I want that. Impacts, again, I want that 100%. Uh, road impacts, again, 100%. Road rumble, 100%. Road vibration, I wanted this down, right? I wanted this way down. <clears throat> this is just very, very subtle uh, movements. Like, let's say I'm going up around a corner and there's no divots, there's no anything around there, and I just feel this very subtle road texture uh, in my thighs and my lower back as well. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can also do like response curves with all these. I really didn't mess with all the response curves except for the actual RPMs. If you wanna see what my chart looks like for the RPMs, I have it on spline saved. And it, it, it feels pretty cool. So it's like a wow, 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 wow. Sorry. And again, this is hard to review, right? This is actually really difficult to review because you guys can't feel what I'm feeling. So I'm doing my best to articulate uh, these sensations as well. Uh, RPMs, again, that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, definitely have that 100%. Simulated road texture, again, around 20%. Yeah, and that's a really, that's kind of a low frequency. Like if I were to guess, that'd be around like 32, 33 hertz. And it's just like very, very, very little. You don't want that overpowering. 
Less is more when it comes to haptics, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that. And again, all these off, okay? So hopefully this gives you guys a pretty good baseline and an understanding of not only just how haptics work, but you know personalized settings like this. Because again, if you have a lot of these enabled or if you're using the uh, not so great other default software for this, uh, you're gonna have some trouble uh, setting this up to your liking. And I think a lot of people, and this is just my personal opinion, I think that a lot of people, they throw this on there and they think that just right out of the box, it's gonna feel good. It's not, it's not. It's not, <laughs> it's simple as that, it's not. And I am a candidate of that as well. I was like, I'm gonna return this. I was dead set on returning this. Like, and, and I watched a couple of guys out there, they created some custom profiles and they're like, hey, try this out, try this out before you send it back. So, okay, all right, I'll try it out. But anyways, let's get some final thoughts real quick and uh, yeah. And here we are. So let's get some final thoughts here. Price to performance is something that I really like to touch on here because I feel like when you're getting great performance for a great price, usually there's a fine balance in between the two. Now, if I were to go out and source all of these little pucks right here, they'd probably be around $30 to $40 a piece, right? 30 times 30, well, 30 to 40 times eight. And then you do the math at the end of it, you get a separate amplifier, you get a separate sound card, all these things, you're still over a couple hundred dollars. When it comes to getting a haptic set up like this with as much detail, it's already set up. All of your left and right channels are already set up. It's all in one. There's no external uh, amplifier involved. I would say, truthfully, if you're just getting into sim racing, you already have your pedals. You already have a pretty decent setup. You got maybe even have triples. Maybe you have all of your peripherals already set up. Your hardware's solid. I would say that this is the next step before getting bass shakers. If I had the choice of getting something like this instead of bass shakers, I probably would have, truthfully. And then the other question is like, how can I utilize both of these attributes on the rig? And I think I explained it pretty good over there, but you're able to separate and meticulously uh, go into Sim Hub, X out what you don't want, X in what you do want. Simple as that. Too many effects, like I said over there, is gonna muddy the experience. It's gonna be too muddy. There's not gonna be a whole lot of differentiating between certain effects so that when you can localize each of these haptics for different attributes on the car to feel and communicate to you, I think it's a useful tool. So all in all, for 179 bucks, I'd say it's worth it. It really is. And last question, does it get hot? No, it, it actually doesn't get hot, doesn't get warm. I actually played on it and my wife's gonna kill me for saying this. I played on it for two hours the other night no change in temp. So I think it was great. I think it's a great, it's a great useful tool. Is it going to wow you? I think to an extent, yes. If you've never experienced haptics before, this is, this is going to be a pretty cool experience for you. So with that, hopefully you guys have been enjoying these reviews and my camera is going to shut off here. Hopefully you guys have been re enjoying these reviews and you gained some value from this. Again, not pushing anything on you, just giving you my experience. And of course, I will see you guys on the track.